Welcome back, everyone. This is KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. And while I'm sitting here programming my new Anytone 878UV tri-band DMR digital analog radio, I wanted to touch on a couple things in the software to show you how easy the software is and to help you understand some of these terms because I get comments every day. Why don't you make DMR code plug videos? Because everybody does it differently, and I don't think I do it any better than someone else. There's other people that do it better than me. But it deserves a video to show you the software while I'm doing this and to give you some help understand that it's not that difficult to know what these terms are watch this video maybe somebody else's take that information build your own code plug and get proficient at it there's nothing worse than me sitting here building a code plug for two days and putting all my memories in and talking to some guy in a talk group somewhere in Texas that says I have no idea what you're talking about don't even know what a talk group is my buddy programmed this radio and said, go to memory five. You know, let's get together and learn this stuff. Don't just ask for code plugs. Learn how to build one yourself. So let me show you how easy this is to understand. Very basic. And then we'll go into other things like APRS and more. Now, this Anytone 578 connects to the radio. Uh, radio connects to the computer with a standard micro USB cable, which is included with it. But there's no chipset, no special USB. It's all in the radio. Just plug a micro USB in. You should hear Windows come up, give you the driver. Do, 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 do. Comes on. You go to set com port here. Choose the com port that uh, is associated with the radio. In my case, com 7. Go up here to program and hit read from radio. Yes. And you can select both the digital contact list and other data. And it's going to read this from the radio. And you're going to see what I've started with. Now, I'm going to show you what I started with. And, and how I do it. And I'm going to show you an example of a different, somebody else's idea of a code plug. And you'll hear the radio reset here now after I read it. Hey, that means it's connected. Okay. So I started building this. And I don't have much in here yet, but I have enough in here right now to, to build on to show you. Now the, the most important things you need with DMR, okay, it has to do with channel, a zone, of course, your radio ID and a talk group okay there's a lot of stuff in here but those four things are all you need to program a dmr channel or memory okay let's start here we're gonna go to channel now this is what i've done in the days of a regular radio with regular programming software you would have you know thousands of entries and you'd put your each channel of each repeater in there right think about their icons and the kenwoods you've had from how many years those are all channels. We're going to start here on number one. This would be an analog repeater close to me called the W4PHJ. And the typical analog repeater settings apply. Your receive frequency, your transmit frequency. Of course, there's a negative 600 kilohertz offset. If you don't know that, stop right now and go back and figure out how you got your license and start over. You should know what a negative 600 kilohertz offset is on VHF. Very basic, like the third question in the test. Um, so you have your offset. Analog, okay, we could choose digital here, but for now we're going to go analog. Transmit power high, all this stuff is kind of going to stay there. You come down here, CTCSS encode with your PL tone, and in some situations now, not to confuse you, I have a decode on this repeater because it is a Yesu Fusion repeater, which does analog and digital. So in order for me not to hear when someone goes digital on my analog channel, instead of hearing, I'm going to use a decode. So when you set that, you're only going to hear the analog come out on an analog radio channel, okay? So that's not to confuse you there. Most of the time, any other repeater would look like that. You're encoding with your tone. We're going to do decode as well, 107.2. And the rest of that can stay the same, okay? That's one analog repeater channel. You go to the next one, it's the same thing, same tone, maybe a different tone, different frequency, okay? Then you go to a DMR. So wait a second, why am I putting analog with DMR? Doesn't matter. All you need to know is you put all your channels in here. Uh, these are some that are close to me. Some simplex, maybe on 9 through 32, I put all the Sarnet repeaters. Uh, you know, we're going to get to that. So let's look at a digital now. The difference between a digital and an analog memory input. Same frequency here with the offset, although a UHF is a 5 megahertz offset. Okay, channel type is now digital. So you can analog, digital, we're not going to get into the cross-moding at the moment, okay? High power or turbo, medium, low, whatever you want. Now, instead of using the CTCSS down here, you're going to use over here the digital, okay? This is the radio ID if you have one or more programmed. 
um, you know, who's using the radio. That's my radio ID, which is 311-2887. And then you have your color code, okay, which is a factor of DMR. We'll get into down the road or you can look it up. DMR uses a color code and a time slot and an ID. So the time slot, again, not to get confused, normally all your repeaters are on, you know, active on time slot two for main traffic, time slot one for, you know, different traffic or however they set it up. This color code may be six in your area and it may be time slot one is the, you know, the standard. You got to figure out in your area what is for that program or memory channel. In the meantime, this is what's the repeater close to me is color code one, slot two, okay? With with the color code and the slot, and of course the receive group list, that's pretty much what you need to program a DMR channel, but we're not gonna stop there, okay? I'm just showing you right now. That's the difference between an analog and a digital. So let's say you get all this information in. You get a thousand channels in here. Okay, now you go on your radio and you start scrolling that knob and you start going, man, where was that? Was that number memory number 385 or 540? No, you don't have to do that because now you have what's called a zone. Now the zones, what I do for zones, you can do this however you want. Um, you know, sometimes people say, well, you do it different than me. Okay, big deal. The zone is what I consider to me, make it easy for me to find the repeaters or channels that I want. For instance, I have one here, it's called Indian River. Now, right now I have three of those channels in this zone, okay? Let's go back, channel. Three of these channels are near me. 640-130-444.350. Those are three in Indian River County, okay? So those three, I'm going to put in the Indian River County zone, one, two, three. Okay, now the next zone I'll put is Brevard County, which is the next county up. And I'll put these two. Why did I put Simplex in there? Because there's a group of guys that hangs out on Simplex on 146.55 that I talked to. But look, I also made another zone called Simplex. And the Simplex zone, I'm going to have all the national Simplex frequencies in there for VHF, 220, and UHF. So that when I go to the zone on my radio, Simplex, all the simplex channels are going to be in there. Does that make sense? Same thing for APRS. I made one zone with one channel APRS. And that means I can go to APRS on one of my VFOs on this radio, go right to it. But let me let me elaborate on this. Let's go back here for a second. I'm going to make a channel. We're going to call it um we're going to call this one uh uh hotspot. Let's make a channel for a hotspot, okay? We'll call this one open spot. Uh 3. Okay, my open spot frequency, okay, should be a simplex frequency. We'll do uh, color code one. Slot doesn't matter in an open spot. That should be pretty much right there, okay? We'll save that. Now watch, I just made that channel. Now I'm going to go to zone, and I'm going to make a zone called hotspot. Because let's say I have multiple hotspots, and I want one on DMR, one on this one, or several hotspots running. Watch. That's it. I added that one to hotspot. If I go to zone hotspot on my radio, that open spot frequency is going to be in there ready to go. Now I could also make, you know, this can go even further. See, I have Indian River. Now I can do a, a, a zone here called Central Florida. And I could put every repeater in Central Florida, 220, 440, UHF, VHF. But then I can make another zone called Orlando with only Orlando. I can make a zone called Orlando DMR and a zone called Orlando Analog and a zone called Orlando Simplex and a zone called I-95 and put every repeater on I-95 from the Keys to Jacksonville in that. And I know that when I go to the I-95 zone, I can scroll through and choose all the repeaters that are on I-95 in range and I'll never have no repeater in range to talk to. Does that make sense with zones? Now, other people do it differently. They make one zone, which is for one repeater in the area. And in that zone, they have multiple talk groups. And wow, what's that word? Okay, so we have channel, we have zone. Let's talk about talk groups. Now, talk groups are basically, let's call them your area code. 
how do you know when you want to dial a Miami number? The first three numbers are 305, right? And that'll get you to Miami. Then the next three numbers, the prefix is going to be what section of Miami. And then you have the last four. And, and basically, a phone number is nothing to do with a talk group. But you get the idea. The Texas Statewide DMR Talk Group is 3148. Now, every repeater in Texas that is on DMR that wants to participate and be on the same, let's call it area code, would be linked to 3148. D-Star calls it reflectors. Fusion calls it fusion reflectors or rooms or nodes. Talk groups are where do you want to talk. For instance, I'll go right here. Digital talk group. Let's make one. We'll call this one, um, I don't know. Let's call this Worldwide because it is a worldwide talk group. It's a group call, talk group one. That will be a worldwide talk group of one. So in the way this is programmed right here, what I would do is go to my zone. I would go to Indian River, right, on the radio. I would pick the Treasure Coast DMR. Now when I'm on that Treasure Coast DMR, I simply go up and down on my microphone to choose which talk group I want. I can go into the repeater in Vero, and talk to any of these talk groups, 31123, 3148, 31711, and how many of they, there used to be a um, TAC 310, I think they shut that down, right? And that was 310. So you can go in on the local repeater to talk group 310. Does that make sense? Let's recap. Your channels are each individual repeater or frequency programmed in the radio with each individual settings and offsets of their own. Your zone is how you're grouping them together to make it easier to find. And your talk groups are where do you want to route your traffic. That's pretty much it. Now, there's other things that we're not going to get into today because I want to keep it under 15 minutes and keep it very, as they call it, dumbed down version. Not saying you're dumb. Not saying I'm dumb. But I'm just saying I, I, I want to keep this very basic. You can learn on this little bit of information. Then you can start going researching, hmm, what's a DMR color code? Maybe I'll make a video on that. We'll go about that. There's other things in this software on the 578 that I could show you, but we'll do that in another video. I want to show you now the difference because there is no right or wrong way to do this. How do you program a talk group or a code plug is not a general way. You don't have to do it this way. Okay, but watch this. I'm going to load up this other code plug that I got from somebody for a test and show you how they did it differently. You can do this any way you want. Now look at this. Channels. Oh, okay. Channels. Okay. Now it looks like they have channels here. Now look, all these channels right here are all the local Vero Beach DMR repeater. They're all digital. They're all set to the same frequency. Okay. But then they have different talk groups. You see? They could talk to North America, TAC 310, Southeast Florida, Florida, uh, Yesu System Fusion Link, Sebastian, Vero, right? And then when you go into zones, look what they did. So they have zones for their hotspot, right? So here's their zoom spot. And in their hotspot zone, there's all the talk groups. You know, they have a lot of talk groups in here. Look at this. Uh, Sarnet, all the Palm Bay. They have these right here. So when they go on their radio to zoom spot, they could pull up Treasure Coast, Vero, Sebastian, Local, Southeast, TAC 310. And then when they go here to uh, Fort Pierce, there you go. They could pull up, you know, Treasure Coast, Treasure Coast 1, uh, you know, Local 2, Local 9, uh, all these. So that's just the basics. And don't forget your radio ID. Got to have a radio ID. Okay. Mine is different. This is just off their code plug. When you're done and you, you know, open up and you read, go ahead and save that and write to radio, and at that point, build on it. Find more frequencies that you want. Find more, you know, uh, free, put them all in there, and organize them how you want. But you can see just how easy it is to understand that it's not terrible to know zones and talk groups and channels. That's just the start of what that means, and we'll get into it in the future. Best part about these radios, though, is I could just make my code plug and dump it in the other radio when I'm done and have one on my hip for ham, ham fest. With all that code plug and then one in the vehicle I'm driving around during work. 7-3, guys. Thanks for watching. Look for more videos. I'm going to put this thing in the vehicle here when I get the code plug done. Test the antenna and uh, hopefully talk to you on some of these talk groups. 7-3, KJ4YZI.